I've recently released a few videos on remotely accessing a Synology NAS, and in this video, I'd like to help you decide which option you should use. The specific remote access services I'll be covering are Quick Connect, DDNS and Port Forwarding, and OpenVPN. I'll start off with Quick Connect, and if you are a beginner, this is probably the remote access service you should consider using to connect to your Synology NAS. It is by far the easiest to set up, automatically taking care of SSL certificates and security, and doesn't require any router configuration on your part. Depending on the options you select when setting up Quick Connect, the service itself tries various techniques automatically to establish the remote connection. Synology Quick Connect servers use either hole punching or establish a connection using relay servers to create a secure connection between the remote client and the Synology NAS. If you plan to use the services, packages, and mobile applications listed on screen, you should be fine with using Quick Connect as your choice for remote access. Watch my video on Quick Connect where I cover the topic in detail by clicking on the card displayed above or by visiting the link in the description below. Using DDNS and port forwarding is very similar to Quick Connect, but it requires a little more setup to get going. I'd recommend this option for those that are comfortable with working directly with your router and have a basic understanding of networking. What you will end up with if you use this option is a direct connection between your remote device and your Synology NAS, which will lead to better performance and transmission speeds. While DDNS and port forwarding is a more advanced setup, it is by no means unapproachable for beginners, and I do my best to explain the concepts and setup in the video that I've linked in the card above, as well as in the description below. I encourage you to try this setup if you are currently using Quick Connect and find the performance slower than you would like, or if you like the idea of connecting directly to your Synology NAS rather than having Synology manage the connection, as is the case with Quick Connect. The last remote access option I'll cover is OpenVPN, which is a little different than Quick Connect and DDNS and port forwarding. A VPN, or virtual private network, allows a remote user to create a secured private connection over the internet to the OpenVPN server running on your Synology NAS. Once connected, the remote user will have access to the resources enabled on the NAS, as well as the services available within the LAN, giving the user an in-office or at-home network experience. A VPN is also considered a more secure option because instead of exposing services directly over the internet, you need to connect to the OpenVPN server to gain access to the services, reducing your overall exposure. Setting up an OpenVPN server is more complicated, but it also offers a more robust access to your Synology NAS and your network resources in a very secure way. If you are interested in setting up an OpenVPN server and would like to access the VPN with either a macOS or Windows 10 client, watch my video on OpenVPN, which will pop up in the card above and is also linked in the description below. In summary, I'd recommend using Quick Connect if you are a beginner and if the Synology NAS service you would like to access is available through Quick Connect. It literally sets everything up for you and provides it in a secure manner, although Synology servers are used to make the connection happen. If you find speed being an issue with Quick Connect and prefer not to have Synology manage your remote connection, consider using DDNS and port forwarding. You also extend what services and applications you can use as compared to Quick Connect. Lastly, if you don't need to expose a service or application over the public internet, for instance, if you or a select few people will need to use those resources, consider setting up a virtual private network like OpenVPN. You get a very secure on-demand remote connection, which also allows you to access other services and applications on your LAN, not just what's running on your Synology NAS. I hope this video helped you in choosing the best remote access option to connect to your Synology NAS 
And if it did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know what remote access option you chose in the comment section down below. Also, if you liked this video, make sure to check out the other videos listed here on screen and consider subscribing to this channel as well. Thanks so much for watching.